Okay, 100 blocks in diameter, 170 blocks from top to bottom, and it can also sell 32 different items to make me the richest person on Superflat SMP. I'll be able to build that in a week or two. One eternity later. It took two months. Step 1. Designing. I'll need to use world edit, which allows me to place many blocks at the same time from afar so that I can create big shapes easily. So I just need some of this and some here and connect these and some grass and absolutely not. This does not work. Instead, I gotta create big mountains made of sand so that any unnatural shapes fix themselves using gravity. And once done, I can turn it upside down and have an awesome base for my island. I copied everything, rotated it so that it would actually look like a floating island and the game crashed because I'm an idiot. I put sand in the air and expected it to fly. Yeah, I'm stupid. After waiting for like 2 hours for all the sand to fall so that my FPS would finally be a positive number again, I turned the shell of the mountain into stone and then deleted all the sand inside so that I was left with a stone outline of the final product which I could now actually paste in. So the block pellet I'm gonna use. No. 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 Oh for goodness sakes, let's do something different first. I can fill in the landscape and sketch out some rivers and a lake. Then I'll add some little shopping stands, a wheat field and one custom tree for every single wood type that's in the game. And I'm aware that I didn't actually build any of this, but I marked out where it will be. Trust me, this technique will work. It's not like it will take weeks to actually design this stuff in Survivor. And now I just need to design a giant sign, which didn't take way too long or something. Here it is touch grass. Up to this point, how long did all of this take? Take a guess. Two weeks! This took two weeks. I definitely need to speed up my building for future projects. Okay, back to the gradient. No, no, mm, what is this? That looks pretty well thought out. Yes. So each of these blocks represents all of the building blocks underneath them. This helps me to keep an overview of what is where when sketching out the gradient with these blocks and when I'm happy I can just replace them with these. The way this gradient works is that there's a transition from a brown muddy upper part to a stone <clears throat> to a lower part made of stone. And secondly, there's a transition from the sunlit side with light dirt and stone shades to the shadow side with darker shades. I also gotta mention that the choice of blocks was heavily inspired by this cliff face from Moxwamp, but now I'm finally done with this lower part of the island. Subsequently, I spent an hour trying out different methods of lighting up this incredibly dark underside of the island and another hour placing the glow berries that I decided on using so that you could actually see this whole gradient I designed just to realize that you can't actually get glow berries in super flat survival. My existence is painful. Also just add glow berries to the wandering trader sales, please. So after this mess up, I made a schematic of the whole island with the Latmatica mod, used that and some thinking to figure out how many resources I was gonna need, and with that, after a long time, I could finally join the SMP again and play in survival. Except that I got sick at that exact moment. Yeah, for the next two days I couldn't play, and for two or three days after that, I was playing less than I normally would be able to in the Easter holidays. Yeah, I got sick right when the Easter holidays started. My existence is painful. It's also painful when recording this voiceover because for every word I say, my tongue hits these tongue spikes. F this. But when I was back, I was finally able to collect all the resources I needed. Step 2. Building. Oh no, I just killed the toolsmith, I didn't wanna do that, I accidentally left clicked instead of right clicking. Oh uh, no, now they are all like three times as expensive. Just because I accidentally killed one of them, that's not fair. 
So R.I.P. I guess he lived a quite long time, like over half a year. This guy only lived for a minute. I had actually only collected the blocks that I needed for the upper part of the island though, because I wanted to finish that first and then add in the less important and purely decorative lower part. So to start off, I placed a few shulkers of grass to have the ground finished and because I'm a moron, I didn't record part of that. My existence is painful. Next, I addressed the gaping hole I'd so far left in the middle of my island. Hi hole, how are you? I addressed the hole by filling it in with a bunch of dirt and then with even more water so that I'd now got a lake and some streams. I then also added a big wheat field to the island right next to the lake around lots of little streams so that the soil would be properly fertilized. The reason that field was there was so that I could sell packed mud, which you need wheat to make, so I thought it would be fitting to sell it in a wheat field. And to continue, I decided it was finally time to try building the first tree. But when I started doing that, I got attacked by phantoms for the first time in quite a while, because I hadn't slept in 3 days. By the way, phantoms are literally one of the best mobs in the whole game. Why does everybody hate them? They are entirely optional to experience at all, because you can just sleep and avoid them. They look really good and somewhat fill the role of the birds that Minecraft lacks in my opinion, and they are great for aim training and really fun to fight once you get the hang of it. And you might say that they are completely useless though, and that makes them a bad mob. But guess what, they are not, they actually heal your elytra. And I'm not talking about that useless phantom membrane, that's just a collectible to show off how many phantoms you've killed. But I'm talking about their XP, because in the world where you don't sleep, they give just enough XP to constantly keep your mending elytra working. And you can trust me dear, because I spent 1378 days without ever sleeping in hardcore. Also please subscribe, because for every subscriber this video gets, I'll get one diamond block in Minecraft Superflat, which is actually only possible looting end cities. Why in Superflat? Well I don't know if you've noticed yet, but this SMP is actually on Superflat, which makes everything a lot more hard, but also a lot more fun. But I digress, let's get back to building trees. The first tree I'd picked to construct was the Isalia tree, and that didn't go well at all. I tried to build it in different ways several times, but I liked none of the versions and destroyed them over and over again, until I finally decided to put it off for some time and instead went into a creative testing world to spend 6 hours and the whole rest of the day designing my future storage system. You'll see how I did that after I'm done building a minigame and building a villager trading system and building Technoblade. Yeah, I'm really busy. But I digress again. On the next day I did easy things like putting bone meal everywhere so that everything would look nice and lush and then breaking the big grass so that it wasn't too chaotic. I also took all the ugly torches and buried them underground with some moss carpet so that there would still be enough light. After that I looked at some tree tutorials and this speed up tree in particular until I'd finally figured out how to build a passable tree and I could do the last steps of adding a bunch of leaves. Except that I was absolutely unable to do a good job at that and so after starting the spruce tree but then deciding not to finish that I moved on to other stuff yet again. This time I decided to just go ahead and already build a big sign in the middle of the island which I somehow managed to mess up by building the touch grass ladders on the back instead of the front. But after I'd contemplated breaking it and moving it for a second, I realized that it contained like 300 honeycomb blocks. And for some inexplicable reason, they can't be mined at a reasonable speed with any tool. Why Mojang? So instead, I collected more shroom lights and built the ladders on the front side as well. To follow that up with some improvisation, I designed some little pedestals, four of which I placed on one side of the island to sell moss, grass, dirt and rooted dirt. And of course, I also had to make some paths and bridges going all around the island and above the rivers to connect all the different shops. But somehow I completely forgot about that in the planning process, so I just winked it and I think it turned out great. Now I had to replace the dirt under my lake and rivers with the proper materials of clay, sand and gravel. Unfortunately, that was not a particularly fun thing to do because I had to first place in a new layer of dirt one block lower so that the latter two blocks wouldn't just fall down. Because after all, I learned my lesson about that when copying the mountain at the start of this. Eventually I still got done with this though and after further upgrading the waters with bone meal, kelp, coral blocks and lily pads so that you could get to the chests in the middle of the lake that would sell sand and clay, the only thing left to do before I would inevitably have to go back to building custom trees was to build some stacks of hay in the wheat field, which would serve the purpose of nice lighting and concealing some added water sources so that all the wheat would grow properly. Except that there was one more thing I could still do to procrastinate. I could look at the side of my giant sign and think, huh, this looks kind of boring. Let's add in some pixel art from a lush item that fits the theme. 
and after some trial and error in the test world, I settled on bamboo as the fitting item, which you can by the way not get in Superflat. Please Mojang, just add it to the wandering trader, it's not that hard. And don't forget about cocoa beans while you're at it. But regardless of that, I think the pixel art turned out great. And now, finally, I had to build the custom trees. But of course, I was able to put the leaves off for even longer by instead focusing on the stem first. Step 3. Building trees. For a start, I complete the stem of the spruce tree, which you might think looks pretty bad compared to the azalea one, and that's because it does, but I think a spruce tree is mainly well placed leaves around some sort of stem, and thus it will look really good later. I don't know though, because I haven't built it yet when I'm writing this part of the script. Spoiler, I was wrong. The next two trees would be crimson and warp, which were my favorite ones to build, because I conveniently decided that they were dead trees and had no leaves because being in the overworld instead of the nether would make them die. And because I wanted them to look dead, they would also be smaller. Less work for me, nice. Next I made the fat dark oak tree stem, and this is one of the few trees where it actually looked like an improvement on the default design instead of completely redoing it. And I think it worked out pretty well. I also realized when making this one, that no matter how much I want to do all of this as detailed as possible, it just doesn't pay off to decorate all the branches with fences, fence gates, stairs and slabs like I did on the azalea tree, when I'm gonna cover it up with leaves in the end anyway. And for this one, I would have loads of leaves and virtually no visible branches in the canopy, so I just stopped doing that for most of the following trees. Then I started work on the palm tree, which was of course the one out of jungle logs. I tried to make it big, but palm trees just aren't as big as the big spruce and oak ones in real life, so I still ended up with a smaller result than for the other trees. Despite that, I think it's pretty good. And of course, with a tree that small, I didn't wait with the leaf wedge, but built it immediately. The following tree was the acacia tree, which was also a lot of fun to build and I think came out pretty well as a kind of wide savanna tree. For this one, I also added the leaves already instead of waiting for later. But more importantly, the acacia stairs have a completely different color than its logs, so there was no way I was gonna be able to use those for details. And so, I thought about that for a second and realized that stone and andesite fit the color of acacia logs perfectly. And I don't know if you've noticed, but while I'd never used stone up until now, this kind of thing is something I did quite a bit on some of the other trees. The azalea tree has spruce plank details, the palm tree acacia plank ones and the spruce tree details are made out of dark oak stairs and slabs. Because all of these fit better for the tone of the logs I was using than their own planks. After that, I built the oak and birch tree, which were both really different, but despite that they were both inspired by designs from beat-ups. Because I feel like he just really nailed those types of trees. And for the oak one, I did something relatively basic, but with the birch tree, I really went all out by making it the only tree on the island that didn't only include stairs and slabs out of stone materials, but was actually mostly made out of diorite in order to spruce it up a bit. Or birch it up, I guess. This made it even more unique than the acacia tree. And for the oak tree, I also decided to immediately add the leaves instead of waiting. Next, I used two different leaf types for the cone-shaped birch tree foliage, because I think azalea leaves fit really well with the birch color, which I totally discovered myself and didn't find out because of beat ups. What I also discovered on my own is the string trick. See, you wanna leave some air holes in most of your tree canopies to make them look better. But that means some blocks won't be connected to others and you'll have to place a temporary block, place the one that you want next to it and break the temporary one again. But I realized that I could also use string as a temporary block and just leave it there because it's practically invisible. So I actually got a little bit distracted packaging over 10 shulkers filled with string from my mob farm before building this tree. And I also might have gotten a little bit distracted by this trick when writing this script. But let's go back to the floating island. There I designed a mangrove tree, which wasn't too easy because there's like no actually talented builder who's done a custom one of those yet. But with that hindrance, I just decided to go off of real mangrove trees, building the roots out of fences and the actual root block and making it much more intricate than the default mangrove tree. And then I built the stem, which honestly wasn't that hard. And with that, all of the tree stems were done and some of them even already had leaves. But I had to also add those to the leaf lacking trees, like the dark oak tree. And to keep the upgraded default tree aesthetic, I made this one less airy, leaving less holes and generally stuck to a more basic design. The following tree being the spruce one, which I thought was gonna be pretty easy, I now had a lot of confidence. But after doing only the lowest part of it, I'd already run out of leaves, which I had to collect a lot more of. 
And after I'd collected enough and grown tons of frondessence, frondessence, I took a look at the final product and realized this looks awful. So I destroyed all the leaves again and locked off for that day. When I continued playing, I decided I was gonna postpone the finalizing of the spruce and the salia tree once more. But I wasn't done with the rest of the things. Quite the opposite actually. The most daunting task was still left to do. I still had to do the underside of this whole island. Step 4. Building. Again. But no matter how daunting a task that might be, it's not particularly entertaining. So here's a montage of how I got all the materials. No, I just destroyed my fully enchanted netherite eggs. But how am I gonna build these gradients? Placing every block exactly the way it was in the schematic would be pointlessly slow. Instead, I'll again work with the gradients laid out before and randomize blocks by putting an equal amount of all of them in my hotbar and scrolling through it with my unlocked mouse wheel while placing. But the problem is that there are 9 different parts to this gradient that all require different hotbar layouts. And from the finished product this schematic shows, it's not obvious which part ends and starts where. So to fix this, I had to spend several hours in the test world reversing everything to the point right before I turned all the planned out gradients into the intended blocks and restore them to the colors they had before. But now that I've done that and made a second schematic of that so I can build after that plan, I can finally finish the shape of this flying island. And I gotta say, it was a lot of work, but I certainly don't regret it. And before I get any angry comments, yes, I did build the light and better looking side of the gradient facing away from the shopping district, but it was already too late when I realized the back side was in the front. Regardless of that mishap, I think this whole gradient looks great. And while I was kinda hesitant about doing it at the start, I did later add glowstone to the front facing backside so that you can properly see the gradient that I spent so much time on. And I'll also light up the rest of the island underside later, but there's no time for that because I have to finally finish this video. So to be able to do that, as the second to last thing, I copied the design that I made using world edit and randomizing for the Isalia tree, and while it did take like 4 hours to do, in the end I had a very nice looking tree, as well as a bee nest hanging off of it, because I also wanna sell honeycomb and honey blocks here. So, finally, as the actual last thing to do, I used the technique from the Isalia tree to make the horror badge of the spruce tree, and I think it turned out great. And now, after ages and ages, I am finally done with this project. My existence is uh, pretty good actually. The island is done, I think it looks awesome, I have stocked none of the shops, but I don't actually plan on selling everything here anyway. Instead I wanna encourage the other members to build farms and sell things in the shopping district so that we have more interaction and fun on this server. Hopefully someone with a wood farm wants to sell logs here. But you watching this probably can't do that, except if you watch to the end because you wanna now join my discord using the link in the description so that you can apply for the server there. But otherwise you can also just like, comment and watch either my 1380 day journey in hardcore on my left or whatever is my latest upload on my right. Bye.